in my research investigate the mechanisms of ACSL1 gene expression. Uh, my supervisor is Dr. Jeonga Kim. So the importance of my research stems from the fact that more than 30% of adults in the United States are obese, um, which leads to multiple health problems including diabetes, higher blood pressure, um, higher risk of stroke and all of that. And so the obesity levels are still rising. So research into how it functions on a molecular level is crucial for future preventative measures. So a large physiological factor that affects obesity is adipose tissue, which is composed of adipocyte cells. Um, the main role of adipocytes is to store energy in the form of fat. Um, so you see here in obese individuals that their um, adipose is expanded, which is due to both hyperplasia and hypertrophy, which just means that each individual adipocyte cell is larger and also there's an increased number of adipocyte cells um, in total. However, in leaner individuals, the adipocyte cells that store fat are smaller, they're better at regulating metabolic homeostasis, and they're also more sensitive to insulin, which is desired. So like I said, there, um, the role of adipocytes is to store energy in the form of fat. However, there are different types of adipocytes. Um, the white adipocytes basically just store fat. However, the brown adipocytes use the energy um, and release it as heat. There also is beige adipocyte, which is a blend between white and brown. So increased levels of both brown or beige um, adipocytes is linked to more energy expenditure and also leaner individuals. So the current issue that scientists face is that they don't know the exact mechanisms of how pre-adipocytes differentiate into the different types of adipocyte cells. And so if this adipogenesis, which is what the differentiation is called, um, can be understood, then we can figure out how to get the brown or beige adipocytes um, show up more often. So this brings us into the gene of interest in my research, which is ACSL1. ACSL1 is an enzyme that pretty much uh, controls what the fate of the fatty acids in our bodies, um, what the fate is. Um, so it, the fatty acids can either be stored as energy or they can be used. Um, so in my lab, it's already been found that during fat differentiation, which is the differentiation of brown adipose tissue, there's increased levels of ACSL1 gene expression. Um, so again, brown adipose is desired, it's what we want, it allows us to use energy more easily. Um, and so this just shows that ACSL1 has some important regulating factor in um, creating brown adipose. So here's just a visual representation of the bat differentiation. Um, so on the left is wild type, or just the control. And then on the right, it's um, with ACSL1 knocked out or removed. So you can see that there's significantly less brown adipose in the ACSL1 knockout group. Um, so again, this just shows the importance of ACSL1 in bat differentiation. So in order to see which specific part of ACSL1 is crucial to the gene expression, we use ACSL1 as a promoter, and then we use luciferase as a um, reporter gene. So with the promoter, we do promoter bashing strategy. So basically we start out with a 2.5 kilobase long um, ACSL1 gene, and I cut off the end of it by about 0.5 kilobases each time. And each time I cut it off, I look at how much of the gene is expressed. So to, do, to look at the expression, we use luciferase, as I said. Um, luciferase is found in fireflies, and it causes fireflies to glow. So people use it as a reporter um, gene because it gives quick quantitative measurements of how much the gene is being expressed. Um, so in this example, after two cuts of the promoter region, you can see that the expression goes down significantly. That means that the piece of the promoter that you just cut out is crucial to gene expression. So before luciferous assay can be performed, a bunch of other procedures need to be done first. Um, so to begin with, after you figure out which region of ACSL1 you want to use, you have to put it through a PCR or polymerase chain reaction. PCR amplifies this region so you have more to use throughout the experiment. After that, you put the PCR product through gel electrophoresis just to check that you obtain the correct um, region that you wanted. Um, so gel, the gels will separate into bands um, based off of the size of the Gene. And so with my example of 2.5 kilobases, it would show up in the region um, pointed out here. So after you're sure that you obtain the correct region, um, we modify the en ends of the promoter using restriction enzymes, and then we can insert it into a vector. In this case, the vector is a luciferase reporter vector. Um, pretty much the vector allows us to um, insert both the ACSL1 promoter and the luciferase reporter gene into the cells. And so the first cells we begin with is the bacterial cells. Um, this is called transformation. And so basically we do transformation to mass produce the DNA that we um, created 
Um, so after the cells transform, then we perform DNA isolation to get the DNA to use it in the next step, which is transfection. Transfection is where we enter the DNA into eukaryotic cells, um, and then we can test luciferous assay finally. So here's an example of some results from the luciferous assay. As you can see, the light intensity directly correlates with how much a gene is being expressed. Um, so basically, once we figure out the specific target region of ACSL1 that is important for its expression, we can better understand how brown adipose tissue is differentiated into. Um, and with that, we, it can lead to scientific breakthroughs of how obesity functions on a molecular genetics level. Thank you.